Have you ever scrolled through your projects and just thought about how some of them aren't as good as the others? Like, for example, let's take this project, Minecraft Clicker 2. And I made this about three years ago, and I'm not very proud of it, that's why I haven't released it. And I think you can see why. It has no code in the backdrops or here, and the costumes are just weird. I just was messing with the surprise button, I guess. It has two things, a dirt block and the point variable. Now, your project might be like this, well, maybe at least with some code, but it might need some improvements to the code, to the art, and maybe just need some little tricks to make it more popular. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, and in today's video, I'll be showing you 5 tips to make your scratch games better. So without further ado, let's begin. Let's move on to the first tip. Keep the project alive and moving. Now this is probably the most important tip I'm going to give you. So you need to keep the screen full of moving objects to make your project look more polished, and it keeps people intrigued. Now let's test this out. Would you rather click on this project or this project? Of course you chose this one unless you're weird. Now of course this one was better because it's more polished, it has moving objects, and it's more eye-catching, you know? It keeps your attention. So we can do this by keeping this Minecraft block moving up and down, let's say. Now we could just use like change Y block or move the costume and change through the costumes, whatever these costumes are, but I have a way better way. Put the go to x00 and you can put a multiplication block and as you can see this sign block takes an input and turns it into a smooth relation between minus one and one what this means basically is that if you input the timer which keeps increasing then the sign block will keep going between one and minus one as you can see i'm clicking it and it's slowly going down now to speed this up and customize it to how you want you can put a multiplication block inside and outside of the sign so the first input tells you exactly how fast you're going to get it to move let's put 100 and the second input tells you how far up and down it goes so i'm going to put 10 pixels let's test that out and you can see it moves up and down 10 pixels you can see where my mouse is if you want to make it go up or down you can use the plus or minus around the whole thing and that looks pretty cool. It's more eye-catching than what it was before. And that leads on to the next tip, to keep your project concise. Now, that's what I just did now. It actually follows on from the last one. This is a lot better than, say, using the change Y, change Y, change Y. Because this is just not as efficient. It uses way too many blocks, and it'll be super laggy on those people who have, like, 1940 computers for some reason. Just get a better PC. So let's try it like this. Let's say that your project looks like this. Now, I don't personally think this is going up and down very smoothly. I don't think anyone would disagree with me because this is way better. And it, look how many piles of code this takes compared to this. And this is so much smoother and better. So always look at your variables and try to figure out a way to make it concise, delete lots of variables, try and reduce the number of blocks. You can also try and increase the number of custom blocks you use because custom blocks can save you a lot of code. For example, just take a look inside my universe size comparison project, link is in the description, and you'll see exactly what I mean. That moves us on to the next tip. Put some effort into your art. Now, I know this is Minecraft and that everything's pixelated, but I've seen people drawing stuff like this as art. And I personally think that it's their choice if they want to do that because their project isn't going to go very far. But if you want to make your projects look really nice, then the art is essential. For example, here are some tips that I can give you. Firstly, press shift to make any shape you put regular. For example, if I want to input a rectangle, and I hold shift, it will become a perfect square. And if I want to invert an oval, then you can hold shift before making it and you can get a perfect circle. And this can be really useful, especially when trying to design something because you're just going to see an oval instead of a circle. And it's going to look really weird if you're drawing something. So the other thing you can do is draw a perfect square with the tip I just gave you and delete one point using this tool and you have a triangle. Now, it's not really the triangle that you would think because this is a right angle triangle 
If you want a normal triangle, turn it over while holding shift to lock it to 45 degrees. And there you go, triangle. You can customize it to anything you want. You can turn it sideways, make an arrow, you know, anything you want. That moves us on to the fourth tip. Make it popular. I see a lot of people having problems with this. Lots of people complaining about how their project is so good, yet doesn't even get any views. Now, I can't really be lecturing you guys on this because most of you will probably get more views than me. I, I only get like, this one has one view. I know I haven't shared it yet, but you know, you get the idea. My most viewed project only has 500 views or so. And to make it more popular, I actually made an entire video about it by making tags, making thumbnails, and you can click on it. The tag is right here on the top right. Can you see it? The white one? Oh, it's probably gone now. And link is also in the description, so I'll see you there. And the last thing we need is a few minor improvements for this video. Now, let's say I'm making a clicker game, which I am, and I want to use the when space key pressed, change points by one. I'm just going to reset it, actually. And you can see when I press space, it increases by one. That's fine. You can hear my space bar. But what if I hold space? And there's the problem. Now, you can put a cap on how fast people can click. For example, do one divided by the number of clicks per second, and that will be the limit. For example, the limit here is 10 clicks per second, but it's really flimsy and it's just annoying. So to fix this, use a forever loop. And instead of using the when the sprite click, make an if, and if the key space is pressed, then we wait until it's not pressed. So it waits until we're finished pressing the space key, and then we want to perform our action. So let's say change points by one, and one green flag clicked. Let's try that out, and you can see I'm holding the space bar. Oh. That, that, that's, that's unexpected. I forgot to put a not here and it should be wait until the not key space pressed. So you wait until you've taken it off. And then you should see that only when I take my space bar off, does it increase. I'm holding the space bar and nothing will happen until I take it off. And that's really it for this video. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share. And I'll see you guys in the next video.